Emily Blunt talks about seeing Barbie four times and sneaking into an Oppenheimer screening with her husband, John Krasinski. Emily Blunt, star of Oppenheimer, and John Krasinski, who had his debut on the popular NBC comedy series The Office, are one of Hollywood's most cherished pairs. It's interesting to note that admirers of the vintage mockumentary frequently prefer to see Krasinski on the red carpet with his previous co-star, Jenna Fisher's Pam Beasley, as opposed to Blunt. People still say, I wish you were with Pam, whenever I walk beside him, Blunt said in an episode of the Variety Awards Circuit podcast. They inquire, where's Pam? And I respond, she's not here. Jenna is one of our best friends, and we adore her. This week on the Variety Awards Circuit podcast, we talk about Blunt's part in Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, her take on the Barbenheimer summer buzz, and the possibility of an Edge of Tomorrow sequel. Eve Hewson, the star of Flora and Son, talks about her songwriting approach and working with filmmaker John Carney. The roundtable also explores recent occurrences, such as Robert De Niro's modified Gotham honors speech and early predictions for precursor honors. The film Oppenheimer explores the life of Robert J. Oppenheimer, the man responsible for creating the atomic bomb, a weapon that changed the course of history forever. Along with Blunt, the picture also stars Cillian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pug, and Matt Damon. Since its summer premiere, the film has brought in over $1 billion worldwide and contributed to the hashtag Barbenheimer movement which encouraged audiences to see Greta Gerwig's meta-comedy Barbie twice. Blunt declared, I absolutely loved it, expressing her excitement for the movement. The SAG-AFTRA strike broke out during the July London premiere, forcing the whole ensemble to walk off the red carpet and forfeit the opportunity to see the movie with a crowd. But Blunt and Krasinski took advantage of the chance and managed to secure a screening in Nyack, New York. We broke into an Amax at a mall on a weekday during a 4 p.m. showing, she recalled. The crowd dressed just like Oppenheimer did. It seemed unreal. I told Chris, Cillian, and Emma about it right away. Although it's to be expected in the middle of New York City, seeing children costumed like movie characters was amazing. Blunt acknowledged that she had seen Barbie four times, once alone, once in cinemas, and once with her Margaret-obsessed daughters, but Ryan Gosling is by far their favorite. Other than Ryan, they've never really expressed an interest in getting to know anyone I've worked with. Blunt just finished shooting The Fall Guy, an action movie that will be released in 2024. Her co-star in the movie, Ryan Gosling, was hailed by her as witty and as smart as you could ever dream him to be. The British actress was as effusive in her praise of Christopher Nolan, the director of Oppenheimer. His extraordinary vision and vast intellect make him the industry's greatest director. Without him, I can't fathom the film experience. In the film Oppenheimer, Blunt portrays Catherine Kitty Oppenheimer, the wife and ex-member of the Communist Party who, in spite of her battle with alcoholism and her obvious faults as a mother, supports the notorious inventor of the atomic bomb while offering the essential reality checks. Despite having little on-screen time, the 40-year-old Alice star makes a lasting impression impression with phrases like why won't you fight, and you are not entitled to sin, and then beg for our sympathy from everyone when there are repercussions. Kitty's deposition, which takes place at a crucial scene near the end of the movie, shows her smiling and smirking, bringing the complexity of her character to life. It was intentionally a very cramped set, and it was one of the last scenes I shot, she remembers. What I found so brilliant about the sequence when I read it is that had grown so erratic and explosive by this stage in the movie, and maybe harmful due to her drinking issues and her own hidden desperation. She's so obviously set up to fail in that scene. She went on to say, she's hardly even walking in a straight path. She was a terrible mother and housewife, and I thought I was simply wonderful where you see that extraordinary intellect that has degenerated through the contortion of having to be both, and that exceptional mind that was squandered. That scene shows how it was reclaimed. Blunt has worked with some of the best actors and directors in the business. She stands with Idris Elba for Beasts of No Nation, having received five Golden Globe nominations, two BAFTA mentions, and three SAG awards, among them, her unexpected victory as an expectant mother in Krasinski's directorial debut, A Quiet Place, as one of just two people to win a SAG award for a motion picture in 2015 without getting an Oscar nomination. Her performance with Tom Cruise in the Groundhog Day-inspired sci-fi movie Edge of Tomorrow was my pick for her best-ever movie performance, according to my list of her top 10 performances for Variety, though nothing more substantial has surfaced, rumors of a possible